In the last video, I talk about how both Ben's shoes and Jason's shoes are fundamentally the same business, but they have different capital structures. And the way we saw that is that they, their everything, their revenue, gross profit, all the way down to their operating profit was exactly the same. They're generating the same economics from the operating part of their different of their business, but because they have different capital structures, what happens below that line was a little different. In particular, you saw interest expense on Jason's business and not on Ben's income statement. So let's Let's look at what that means. So if you look at both of these guys' assets, so this down here, this is kind of their balance sheet. You see that they're the same. They both have $20,000 in cash. And I've drawn it over here. This is Ben's assets, $20,000 in cash, $20,000 in cash. They both have $100,000 in inventory. And I've made, I've made the height proportional to how many dollars we're talking about. So they both have a larger amount of inventory. And then they both have $20,000 we do that in that same color and they both have $20,000 of equipment, $20,000 of equipment. So their assets are the same. The things that are actually generating the revenue and the profit are the exact same thing. We're assuming that uh, they're also renting in very similar locations. That's what they would have to happen for them to have such similar economics. Now what's different about them is what happens on the other side of the balance sheet. And this is what I meant by them having different capital structures. So let me draw the liabilities side for both of these characters. So let's do liabilities. Liabilities there, and liabilities over here. Now, they both have the same amount of accounts payables. Maybe the people they're buying shoes from, they're able to delay paying their, those, those shoe purchases a little bit, so by a few months or a few weeks or whatever. So they owe those vendors some money. So they both have $5,000 in, in accounts payables. Let me do that. I'll do that in pink. So they both have $5,000. I'll try to do it proportional to the size. So that right over there, that's the accounts payable, the $5,000. They both have that on the liability side. Now where they really diverge, so this is the same amount, $5,000. It should be about 1 fourth of this side. It's not exact the way I've drawn it. But where they really diverge is that Jason, Jason over here, let me do this in an appropriate color. Jason over here has $100,000 in debt, and Ben has no debt. So in his liabilities, he also has $100,000. He also has $100,000 in debt. So this is the debt right over here, $100,000. And Ben doesn't have it. So the way, the way you can think about capital structure is they have the same assets. Capital structure tells you, how did they pay for that asset? Did they take it with debt? Are they deferring payments to some of their vendors? Or do they have equity? And we can see whatever's left over. Remember, owner's equity is assets minus liabilities. So what we have left over here is the owner's equity. So they both had $135,000 in assets. You subtract out the $105,000 of liabilities for Jason. He has 35 k of equity, $35,000 of owner's equity. On Ben's side, he has much more. So he kind of paid more of this, or more of the capital structure's equity. Here, more of it is debt. But if you have $140,000 in assets, you have $5,000 liability. Here he has $135,000 in equity. So when we talk about capital structure, we're saying, how are we funding the assets? And not only do we talk about the composition between, uh, uh, between, between debt and equity, we're also talking about how the equity is composed. And we can see in both of these, their equity is split into 10,000 shares. So each of those shares would be 1 10,000th of the, just the equity piece. So you split that into 10,000, or you could split this right here into 10,000.